uh, Bagzed from Kurdistan, Turkey. So uh, I'm very close to there, in fact. Hey, Mr. Mantel, recently. Hey, Mr. Mantel, I hope you're doing well. I'm particularly interested in the career and impact of Fit Finley. As someone who has worked closely with many wrestling legends, I would love to hear your thoughts on his contributions to the industry, both as a performer and behind the scenes. Could you share any memorable experiences or anecdotes about working with Fit? Well, when I met Fit, he was an agent, producer for WWE. And what I liked about uh, Fit, uh, and I didn't really know him that well, but he would he would get in the ring with all the talent that was in his segment, say it was a tag match. He would actually get in the ring and he would say, listen, when this happens, you need to be here. You need to be over there. He would go through every, every segment and every aspect of that match. So they wouldn't screw it up. And if somebody wanted to, and what I liked about fit, he was, he was easy to talk to. And when he said, no, let's don't do that, he would give you a reason why you shouldn't do that. And the reason made sense. And unless this, this, this new talent hears this and learns to, uh, to put a match together or pack a match with a, a lot of stuff, you have to have reasons why you do it here, you do it here, and timing. That's what makes a match good. So, but he was a very, very good match producer and agent. And where is Fit right now? Is he still is producing? He, still there, I think. He's still in WWE, but he left for a while. Yeah, he was fired for something to do with like somebody's theme music or like something that was meant to be patriotic. And it was, I don't know, it was in bad taste or the wrong time to do it and for some reason fit was the one who got fired so he ended up on the indies for a couple of years and then came back again it was it was total overreaction but it was a oh, really yeah see they say well he got fired for drinking a coke what mm. yeah because seven up was a sponsor so you know it is stupid stuff wwe is guilty of that in in a lot of cases because they won't admit it but I think now, since Triple H has taken over, we won't have those, I mean, really preposterous things that happen that you just can't believe. But now I think Triple H, new era, and I, I think they got a really good start on it. I like that you said that Fit Finley would take you into the ring, for your matches as well, or, or Jack's matches, I should say. Yeah. Would you do that for your Well, he would take, he, well, he had us a couple of times. Yeah, he took us in a ring. And, uh, and he would, he would look over at me and said, do you agree with this? And I said, yeah, Hey, it's your match. You put it together how you want, but whatever he was doing was good. But see, not only is he putting it together to make it good, he's teaching talent how to do it. So you got to be here and you got to be here. And, and if the referee was involved, we get the referee in there. So we'd, we'd go over this match about, I don't know, it'd take 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But when they left, they had the match down. And they knew what they were going to do, knew how long they were going to go. And, and so you really need to say, say when you have run-ins or you have something behind the referee's back, something that has to be timed. <clears throat> if you walk through it, and it's what it was called, called a walkthrough. When you walk through it, before uh, the the actual match, now the talent knows what's needed uh, and how to do it and the time it needs to be done in. So they've already done it. Now all they got to do is re replicate it. I've never asked you this. Uh, who were your favorite agents to work with during the Zab Coulter run, or who were the easiest to work with? Well, Tony Gurria was good because he didn't say nothing. <laughs> Tony didn't do nothing. Tony go in there and he'd say, uh, he'd tell Jack, uh, you're with so and so in about nine minutes. And you over, Jack over, whatever. But he he wouldn't say how. Because that is left up to the talent. 
Now, if they, if they had a particular finish they wanted, they would say something then. But Tony would walk away. He's gone. And then he'd come back <clears throat> right when you go on air and he said, what you got? <laughs> because when doing your match, he would have to go up to the go position and sit down and put the headphones on and talk to the truck while the match is going on. So, but he didn't have anything to do with most of the time <clears throat> putting the matches together. He would just give the finish and that's the talent's job to put it together. Only thing he would listen to is the finish. And if he, and if he signed off on it, that's what it was. Uh, who are some other talents? I mean, agents there. Man, I can't, I can't remember at this point. Oh, I had I one. Know. I can't remember his name. Shane Helms, a talent. Uh, uh, maybe not. He was, early, he right? was just starting. Yeah. And he was very hands-on on the, the matches he handled. See, I was more involved with the, with the, with the writers. They would come to me and I, and somebody asked me, what if you didn't want to do something? I would say, Hey, I don't think I need to say this. I don't need to. And they'd say, this is what they would say. That's what Vince wants. And I went, I don't think Vince wants this. Mm. I said, let's go ask him. Oh, no, no, no. We don't have to ask him. Because <laughs> they knew if we went in there and I'm going to say, he says, Vince, that you want it this way. Do you want it this way? And Vince, well, I don't want it. Who said that? <laughs> So, see, they they wrote a uh, an interview for me one time about the Constitution. I said, "Listen, Zeb Coulter is a master on the Constitution. He could recite it forwards and backwards, and he would not say that because that's not what it says." And that's when they said, "Well, Vince wants it that way." And when I started to say, I said, "Vince wants." Zeb Coulter, who is a patriot and a we the people advocate, he wants him to act stupid while reciting the Declaration of Independence, which I, I couldn't believe. So they backed off on that pretty quick, but there were some things I just, I just wouldn't say because I said Zeb would not say this because Zeb, at least when you talk about the Constitution, be correct with it. Don't don't be like he understands it this way or that way. No, there's only one way to understand it, and that's the way that Zeb was interpreting it. And so I wouldn't say it. I forgot what it was, but it was something stupid. I've got a few more names for you. Uh, Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury, were they both producers during your time? Joey Mercury wasn't, I don't think. But Jamie Noble was. And uh, he was good. Now, he's going to watch this, so let me say this. Jamie Noble was the shits. <laughs> he couldn't put crap together. No, he was good. He, he really was. Uh, I'm actually looking at producers who work today, so only a few of them will still be the same. Uh, Billy Kidman, he's been there for years doing that, hasn't he? But Yeah, Billy Kidman, he he worked the... Uh, it says he, he's, he's the go position. Yeah, program coordinator, so he would he be... Like with Bruce Pritchard or something now. No, oh, well, gorilla position. okay. You have the agent sitting in the middle and a guy timing it. And what was it? What was the guy's name you're talking about? Kidman. Kidman. I think he, he was a, a he, he was getting the time together and somebody else just making sure that, you know, he was following the lineup and he was telling odd, get so and so on standby, get him on deck. Because they tell you if you if your match is coming up, stand by close by uh, the go position. Because don't make us go look for you. Especially doing a live show, don't make us go looking for you. Because, and I tell who who did I say that got fired right after his match on the go position? I told you that one time. Yeah, but what that was wasn't it? that wasn't the timing thing. That was. Brad Maddox. Oh, that's what he, yeah, yeah. that's what he said. Yeah. yeah. But he wasn't late, but he just wanted to run his mouth and Vince fired him right on the spot. So he, okay, go. he went out employed, came back unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Having fired, pal. 